Hey guys, well, the holidays are upon us, which means you're going to be eating with friends and family. And I wanted to share with you a few key insights from this book. It's called Why You Eat What You Eat by Rachel Hers. I share this pretty much every year I have for the past you know, several years, but I know we have a lot of new listeners. So I will link the book and links to Amazon here. But let me give you a few tips that I learned from this. And Rachel goes into a lot of the different clinical studies when it comes to why people overeat and overconsume food and how that can be a problem, especially during the holidays. So um, one of the things she highlights here, and I think we're all susceptible to this, uh, and this was a, a study that was conducted at, I think, University of Michigan or Michigan State, where they had people consume two different sort of trail mix. One was labeled as super healthy, had all the all the good stuff, like low sugar, this, that, and the other thing. And another one was like an indulgent trail mix, right? Well, it turns out that people overconsumed the trail mix that was labeled as healthy. So I want you to be aware of that as you're having and indulging and, and you know, socializing with the people you care about in your life. And you, and you say like, I'm going to make my gluten-free cake or my keto ice cream, okay? Just remember, you are more likely to overconsume that so-called healthy ice cream because it checks off all the healthy boxes. Because when we sort of put that halo effect onto the ice cream or the cookies, or in this study it found the trail mix, because it was labeled as healthy, we overconsumed it. People just naturally do that, okay? So we need to be aware of that. There were some other studies that looked at the labeling and, and just, it was on a, I think it was on a cake, one uh, different school, nutrition school labeled the cake. They used words like indulgent, rich, and this, and then they had another label. The cake was the exact same and the label was slim, trim, low fat, but it was identical. Guess what people ate more of? Okay. It was the healthy label. So we just need to be mindful of that going into the holiday season when we're with a bunch of people and, and trying to be healthy. Number two, this is the biggest tip that I learned from that, is you eat more when you're around more people. So if you're naturally one to overconsume anyway and you're trying to lose weight, okay? Um, well, if you're gonna be around a lot of people, maybe I eat mindfully. Maybe I put all the food that I'm going to eat right on the plate and go only eat when I'm sitting down and try not to overfill the plate. Don't sit there and nibble and snack. Just understand that when you're around more people, and if you're the healthiest one in the group, this is what the various other studies have found. When you're around a lot of overweight people and you're not overweight, you tend to sort of, you will overeat, okay? So when you're around unhealthy, overweight people and when you're around a lot of people, you overeat, you choose more foods, okay? So just understand that. The other thing that I thought was interesting from this book is that when you're presented with a lot of variety, right? So you have chips, you have potatoes, you have yams, you have, you know, whatever, all sorts of different options, you're more likely to just overconsume because you're getting a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So reduce your options. And this might be why, honestly, some people on a keto diet, they're like, hey, I can only have like protein and fat. Like, that's it. Like, you know, so that might be easier to stay in an energy balance sort of state. So understand that it might not be good to have a million and one options if you're trying to lose weight. Now, if you're a football player, if you're a bodybuilder, this stuff doesn't apply to you because you're trying to like put on muscle. But for most of you, you want to lose weight. So just understand that all the options are linked with, um, you know, increased consumption. So to me, I think this is really exciting. Now, let's say you know you overate, okay? You, you have your grandmother's pie, you know, your mom makes all these recipes so that bring back all these nostalgic memories from childhood and all that, right? It's all good, okay? What can you do? Please go for a walk. About 90 minutes after you ate your meal, uh, various studies, and I can share with you just links as you, you can see some of the images here. If you walk right before your blood sugar sort of peaks, you can have a dramatic lowering of that. And that, if nothing else, is going to help you feel better about what you just did. But secondarily, obviously, it can control some of the glycolytic damage that can occur in an energy excess within in your body. So uh, it can drop glucose levels and also insulin and get you more back to uh, sort of a that post-meal physiology where insulin is low and glucagon is high and so forth. So these are just some tips to share with you. Again, I want you to enjoy you know, being eating with friends and family and social connection is something that has been really underappreciated in the last two years during the course of the pandemic. But uh, in the, the years leading up to you know 2019, the importance of social connection has been it's on par with, with smoking. And like if you have a deficiency in social connections in your life, your risk of developing future disease is equivalent to basically smoking. And we have been forced to be isolated. So it's so important that you do strive 
to eat with family and friends and do those social events and not be a hermit in your house by yourself because that is not really doing anything for your future health. I can tell you that for sure. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Check out this book, Why You Eat What You Eat. If you're, if you're interested and you just kind of want to know this stuff, um, I have all sorts of like earmarks and notes all over this book. Like it's, it's a good one to go back to, super easy to read. And what's great is Rachel um, lists a lot of the references. You can go read the primary research and then see what they actually found in there as well. So friends, hopefully you have a great Christmas and holiday season. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We will catch you on a future episode down the road. Bye now.